Former Finals MVP Andre Iguodala is returning to the Bay Area. The Lakers got Kendrick Nunn for only a $5 million cap hit. This video ranks free agent deals no one's paying attention to in the top 10 NBA underrated signings of 2021's free agency. Remember, we're focusing on the players that change teams. Before continuing, over three quarters of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed, so if you fall into that percentage, help the channel get to 50k by subscribing. Also, leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Honorable mentions to Jeff Green going to Denver, Torrey Craig going to Indianapolis, JaVale McGee going to Phoenix, and Alex Len going to Sacramento. I thought those were under-talked about moves in addition to these. Number 10 is the former Houston Rockets Sam Decker signing with the Toronto Raptors. Maybe he's most well known for the player who fell on his face at MSG. But after short stints with the Clippers, Cavs, and Wizards, Decker went to play overseas. In 2019-20, Sam signed with the United League in Russia. In 2020-21, Decker went to play in the Turkish Super League, where he gained the attention of the NBA for a second time in his basketball career. In 33 minutes per game, the former number 18 pick from 2015's NBA draft shot 54% from the field, 45% from three-point range, and averaged 15 points per game. As you're seeing from the highlights in the Turkish League, the stretch big has springy hops and, of course, a solid touch from deep range. Based off his efficiency in one of the better pro leagues in the world, great under the radar pickup from Toronto's front office. Number nine, Rudy Gay going to the Utah Jazz. Oh, it's Rudy Gay! Go! No! The 15 year veteran and former lottery pick is signing a two year, $12.1 million deal to join Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert in Salt Lake City. In his prime, the man was a 20-point scorer, but father times led to his numbers steadily decreasing over the last few years. Still, the 34-year-old Gay can be a nice pick-and-pop option next to Mitchell, as he shot a decent 38.1% from three-point range with the Spurs last year. The Jazz also brought in Hassan Whiteside on a veteran minimum, but since Rudy's game suits the modern NBA better, I went with him for this list. Regardless, a very nice offseason for the Jazz, who also brought back Mike Conley. Number 8, stretch big Kelly Olynyk signing with the Detroit Pistons. On an average of $12.4 million per year, the 8-year veteran born in my hometown of Toronto is headed to play in Detroit, with Olynyk being the oldest player on the Pistons, young guys like Cade Cunningham, Sadiq Bey, and Isaiah Stewart will look to Kelly for guidance. In 2020, Olenek was on a Miami Heat team that got three wins away from winning the finals, averaging 12 points and shooting 40% from deep against the Lakers. Kelly's experience playing in the biggest moments should help the young Pistons relax under pressure. Olenek's a versatile stretch big who's got a soft touch inside, as well as from three-point range. He's also an underrated passer, so he should be a good fit under coach Dwayne Casey and next to Detroit's flashy young core. Number seven, Patty Mills getting signed by the Brooklyn Nets on a two-year deal worth seven million. After two years in Portland to begin his career, the Aussie spent the next 10 years playing under Greg Popovich in San Antonio. Along the way, Mills established himself as a legendary three-point marksman and earned a championship ring. Patty shot 53% from the field and 50% from deep, in the 2014 finals, which included a 17-piece to close out Miami in the Spurs' title-clinching win. The Nets' big three just got a player who ranks 73rd all-time, six spots behind Del Curry for the most three-point field goals in history, but Mills just turned 33, so when it's all said and done, he could easily rank in the top 30 in all-time three-point makes. In bed -Stuy, the sniper from down under, should help KD, Uncle Drew, and The Beard live up to expectations in 2022. Number six, finals MVP Andre Iguodala. I want Iguodala. Returning to where he won three championships over the span of five years in Oakland. Golden State also signed Otto Porter Jr., which was a great pickup, but putting Iggy back in Warrior Threads was by far the more underrated deal here made by Bob Myers and Golden State's front office. 
You may be thinking, D Flo, he's aging. The guy doesn't have much left. This isn't that great of a pickup, but I'd actually attest to the argument that Father Time's gotten the best of Andre. With Miami, Andre played 18 minutes per game in this year's playoffs, shot 60% from the field, and averaged a steal per game against the Bucks. That included a game where he had three steals. It's insane to think that this man stole the finals MVP from Curry back in 2015, but his defense on LeBron and efficiency from the field earned him that honor. For a team looking to resume their dynasty, Andre returning to the Bay Area brings back a familiar energy to the one the Warriors had during their span of dominance in the late 2010s. With Clay returning, the old 2014-15 and 2015-16 squads are back intact. Number 5 is the 25-year-old former 19-point scorer Kelly Oubre Jr. heading to the Charlotte Hornets on a $26 million deal over two years. Warrior fans were frustrated by Kelly's inability to stay on the floor as the Tsunami Poppy missed 17 games, including the most crucial one in the play-in tournament. Following a slow start to 2021, Kelly picked up his game, finishing the season with averages of 15 points, 6 rebounds to go along with a steal per game on shooting splits of 43.9, 31.6, and 69.5. Obviously, that free throw percentage needs to improve and the man's gotta stay healthy, but Oubre Jr's a legit scorer at his best, and I think he's become underrated. Great pickup for the Lob City Hornets, Kelly's fast-paced athletic style of play perfectly fits with what this LaMelo-led Charlotte team has going right now. The Hornets also acquired veterans Mason Plumley and Ish Smith, plus they drafted impressive prospects James Booknight and Kai Jones. With all their new additions, who knows how good the Hornets will be in a few years. Number 4, Reggie Bullock going to space the floor next to Luka in Dallas for 3 years and around 30 million. I talked about him when grading the biggest free agent deals, but Dallas adding Reggie got little to no attention from the mainstream media and fans on Twitter and Instagram. But Bullock's a great 3 and D wing who can guard the opposing team's best player and catch and shoot threes on the other end. That's about everything the Mavs needed considering they have a man who's going to dominate the ball for 60-80% to 80 of all possessions in Doncic. Considering they re-upped Boban on a one-year minimum and kept Tim Hardaway Jr. in Dallas, pretty good offseason for Mark Cuban's Mavs. Number three is the savvy Spurs front office led by R.C. Buford picking up Doug McDermott on a four-year, $42 million deal. Also talked about him in my grading video, but Dougie McBuckets averaged career highs in scoring, rebounds, assists, and field goal percentage while attempting the most shots per game of his career at 10.1. A ton of all-time great sharpshooters have rocked spur threads. Danny Green, Patty Mills, Matt Bonner, Michael Finley, Steve Kerr, Robert Ori, Mario Eli, Jaron Jackson, Benno Udre, Devin Brown, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker. San Antonio's trying to make Keldon Johnson their superstar like Duncan was and develop McDermott into one of those all-time great shooters. Number two is record-breaking rookie, now soon-to-be third-year player Kendrick Nunn, chasing a ring instead of the bag and taking a pay cut to sign with LeBron, AD, and Westbrook in LA. While the veteran signings of Carmelo, Dwight, and Trevor Ariza have been the headlining free agent signings for LA, the young pickup of Kendrick Nunn went under the radar. Malik Monk was also a really great pickup, but the product of Illinois Nunn stood out two seasons ago after going undrafted, becoming the first rookie since Kevin Durant to score 100 points in the first five games of his career. Nunn made a very respectable 38% of his threes on 5.7 attempts, which is the exact volume and efficiency that LA needed to surround their trio with. Number one, recent NBA champion with the Milwaukee Bucks, PJ Tucker saying, In this fall, man, this is very tough. Um, in this fall, I'm gonna take my talents to South Beach and um, join the Miami Heat. And teaming up with Butler, Adebayo, and Lowry. The Heat also signed Markeith Morris in free agency, so all around an A++ offseason for Pat Riley and the Miami Heat. Tucker is one of the best perimeter defenders in basketball. He's automatic from the corner and was a massive part of the Bucks' recent title run. Without his defense on Durant, 
who knows what would have happened to Milwaukee. Butler, who's usually tasked with guarding the opposing team's top player, will now have much more in the tank for his typical Jimmy Bucket getting offensively. Considering the Heat got the wing defense that Tucker provides for just $15 million over two years, it's one hell of a pickup, and I think the Heat are top contenders in large part due to acquiring Tucker. In your opinion, which pickup was most underrated? I want to know your take down below. Also, I'm trying to get to know my audience, so follow me on Instagram at dflowhoops. Thanks to the world for sticking around. Hope you have a great one. dflow signing off.